Hi everybody, welcome to another wee video. This is just a wee uh, one I'm going to show you is here. Uh, this is a Volkswagen Golf. Uh, it's a 2009 Mark 6. And we have... Cars in a limp mode, run like a pig, black smoke coming out of it every now and again. P04300 AGR circuit. And... Uh, Fridge and press too, we're not too worried about that. But uh, if anybody's tackled, uh, I know a couple of guys have uh, the EGRs in the back of these things. I'll maybe just show a couple of things that uh, I found to be maybe be helpful to somebody that's going to tackle one of these guys. So, your DPF, you want to take a DPF off a turbo, it drops down, and over the left, there's a wee bracket in here which also stops it, and it's only a wee 13 mil bolt. Uh, let's that drop down a bit further. If you take that off, I disconnected just one of the uh, the differential pressure pipes there. Uh, just to let it go down. There's a good bit of slack in those pipes, though. So, pardon me. The only thing I'm maybe show you is, if you bear with me a second, is something that maybe a lot of guys didn't do. Uh, was I took off the outlet pipe for the turbo uh, and took the battery out and uh, done a bit of stripping. The way I approach these things is uh, you want to take off sort of you know all the stuff that you can actually get at and then that sort of starts freeing it up for you. You know there's a there's a pipe off that EGR that comes in and connects on to the back of the head here and then the EGR pipe comes straight through and that's that's the that's the outlet of the exhaust gases. So it goes on to there, and that is a real pig to get out. There's two Torx bolts on it. But if you take this off, which isn't too bad to take off, and you can let that, that moves about a bit as well. You can get at those two. So uh, that's that's just one wee tip. We'll just cars up in the air at a minute. Just at a sort of nice height where I can sit underneath it. But this is where this pig of a thing is located. That's her in there, guys. Let's see if we can shed a bit of light on it there. So one of the th those two bolts over there, right there, that uh, are on the manifold where the exhaust fumes come from, uh, they are really, really tight. Multiple extensions onto that and a wobble joint. And uh, as you can see, the one on the left, I thought they actually snapped on me. They were the, it was it just broke free with a hell of a crack. And uh, as you can see, the one on the left, uh, the stud just uh, screwed out. But that's no big deal. We can dress the threads up and... Uh, so we can dress the threads up and screw that stud back in again. Another wee thing maybe to note is, a lot of guys take the drive shaft out. Let me see if we can get you around here. All well, guys take a drive shaft out. Uh, and it's probably to get at the oil feed bolt at the bottom there. Uh, the oil feed bolt that goes in there. That's a 27 mil and you can hardly get a, so you, you look at that off with a spanner. It is really, really tight. So you need to have a good lot of tools to tackle this, uh, a good array of uh, tools. I have, uh, I used uh, that one there, which is, isn't too deep. And that was able to go up, up between the drive shaft and get that off. So, the other thing was, I couldn't really test this very well. I'm sort of just going on the fault code at the minute. Uh, where that wire is located, uh, up here, it's, it's on the top, it goes on the top of the, the wee motor, that wire there, and uh, you can't really back probe it or do anything, so just in the live data from uh, the position sensor that's inside that, the actual and the desired, uh, the, the Actually, it was all over the show compared to the desired. So those wee motors there are known to known to known to fail. 
That's the wee motor. That wee motor there. They're, they're known to fail. Uh, probably because of the location of them. They're in a real, real bad place, right under the turbo. Loads and loads of heat there. And uh, there's a wee sort of hook mechanism that brings in, it brings it in and out. And uh, whenever I was commanding it to, uh, with the bidirectional controls on the Autel, uh, it wasn't moving much at all. It was, was moving, there was a bit of a click out of it, but uh, it wasn't moving much at all. So I reckon it's stuck, or it's jamming, or whatever. So, I've got a new EGR on order. They're very expensive. They're 350 quid out of TPNS. Because it comes as one complete unit with that oil cutter, so it's just four bolts uh, for me to uh, do the most of it off. And uh, sure, I'll come back to you whenever we're going. Uh, I'm not going to do a step by step. Uh, this isn't a step by step video by any means. But uh, anybody that does this, we're to lift. Uh, a little hard like a lion, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's more to come. Okay, thank. Okay, here's the EGR with the cooler out uh, and all its glory. There's a wee plastic cap on there, just pops off. Shows you that wee hook mechanism I was talking about. I think I said, I think I said that was an oil cooler earlier on. No, that's a, the EGR cooler. Uh, and there's a bit of current loss, which uh, goes all over you whenever you pull this thing out. So that was the view of it yeah, before. This is the wee flap that's uh, operated by the vacuum. The wee pipe just broke off on me, I couldn't get it off, so I'm going to have to replace that with a bit of pipe. Hopefully I have a bit lying about somewhere. But uh, there you are, that is one pig of a place. So I think I don't need to take my diagnosis any further. I think I've uh, found our problem. So I'll just get that in the shot for you a wee bit better. So this boy here is well and truly stuck in uh, okay, can I get that back come on yeah so there's a complete dead spot there I can hardly move it I'm putting a fair bit of force on that now whether it's, a, it's the teeth that strip in the motor, or whether it's the actual plunger, uh, it's actually not too bad. Um, it's not completely blocked in there. So, it's not completely blocked, but definitely, uh, That is completely not free at all. There's it back to that position. Yeah, so that needs to be a nice smooth action. And it ain't. So, yeah, it's a, an absolute crazy design, this, for that to go in there. Because even that metal, you know, that metal, all, all that needs to do is wear out a wee bit. There's a wee roller in there for it to, for it to go freely, but, uh, So the work involved in putting this in now, I don't think, I told this to the, the owner of the car, you know, you could you could maybe try and free that up and you, uh, you could maybe try and salvage a motor or even put it, you know, even a second hand one in. But you see the, the effort to get that thing in and out, you know, I'm just putting a, I'm putting a new one in. Now, on eBay, there's copy ones of these. Uh, I, for the, the amount of labour involved, if you put one of them in and the thing didn't work great or didn't adapt, these things, these things will have to, it'll have to adapt. I didn't see on the hotel. 
an adaption for it. Uh, and as far as I know, you need to drive about 50 miles or something for this thing to adapt. So it is self-learning. So you can't throw it in and away you go. But uh, it needs to it needs to sort of learn uh, the positioning for the feeling. So uh, there is, a, as I said, there's a motor in here. There's uh, five terminals on this. And uh, there's a motor and there's a position sensor in it. So the car knows where it is on command. So it knows that it ain't an opening. So if you get that fault code, uh, there's a pretty good chance that this thing ain't working right. And for where it's located and the way it's designed, you know, that there is basically open. Uh, that there, there's no seals on it, there's, there's nothing. It's just an old plastic clip that's on it. So, uh, yeah, and at the back of the engine. So, if you had oil leaks or something uh, out of the turbo, uh, which you normally do on cars of this age, 10 year old, 12 year old, uh, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me if that all was gummed up or whatever, but uh, that mechanism ain't good. Let's say I can burn it. Maybe it'll pliers. So, there we go. Hope this helps somebody, uh, but let me take another couple of snaps of the fix, so uh, see you later. Okay guys, back at this Golf. Uh, this is a wee bit of a, a, a shot there. Just to show you uh, what you're dealing with, you're, you're sort of working through that cubby hole there with uh, the exhaust uh, pushed over to the right hand side there and that is the new EGR uh, on with a camera coming in, it looks like there's buckets are in but there isn't, the camera just about fits in this hole here, well it's a, a smartphone. So that is the EGR with the EGR cooler on it there. Uh, EGR cooler. That there is the turbo uh, oil fade and return uh, pipes. Have to uh, connect it to the bottom of the turbo there. That's uh, the uh, exhaust gas where it comes out of the manifold into the EGR cooler. Uh, our wee vacuum pump has that wee uh, heat shield on it, that wee tin foil heat shield that's clipped on. That's our, our new motor. That's the uh, Return lane that down there that has to be tightened down. That lane is still not connected up the turbo. Uh, I've got the uh, DPF just just sitting there on one one stud. If you're gonna focus there, uh, DPF sitting there on one stud. So what we're gonna do now is uh, those pipes are less. Uh, the banjo there, remember the seal. Uh, two copper washers, one in towards the block and one on the outside. That big bolt there has rubber seals on it, so it just slipped back in again. Uh, so that is our new G EGR uh, up in between there. You can't really do much from below from here, uh, but uh, I was doing most of it through that cubby hole there. So a wee bit further on, we'll maybe uh, whenever we get our connected up, get our back down onto the deck and start connecting stuff up from the top. Okay. I just uh, while well, um, we're still under the car here, just thought I would show you a couple of wee, maybe a couple of wee tricks that I did uh, to assist me in getting this on. So this EGR uh, and the EGR cooler, all one unit. Uh, it's about eighteen inches long, and when you're up in there with one hand, you need as much help as you can get. So here's a wee trick uh, that you use for putting gearboxes in as well. What you do is you cut a wee slot in the end there. That is just an ordinary M6 bolt. So we screw that into the block and then hung the EGR on that. So then you're able to get a stubby screwdriver into the, into the wee slot that you cut with the grinder and you're able to back it back out. But that, that, that held the thing, uh, it's like hanging a picture held the thing in place. The other wee, the other wee trick that I did was uh, those torque bolts uh, there's not much of a the, you know the, the nut just falls off or the bolt sorry just falls off the T3, T30 head there so this is your friend 
here. Uh, I'm gonna get, get that for 50p out of the station or whatever. We spot a blue tack on the uh, on the end of the the torques and uh, that jams in nicely, holds it, and you can get on the end of that and uh, you can start it on with your fingers and uh, that that holds that. Okay, doke. And another wee quick one is. Uh, there's a couple of 12 mil bolts on the uh, manifold uh, studs. So here's the uh, wobble joint that I used. I quite like these here because there's a spring on it. So whenever you are holding that, uh, she, she holds herself. And then whenever you want to put it on the bolt, it, it just moves into whatever position you need it to move into. It makes it a wee bit bulkier, this wee spring thing. But uh, if you have the room, you're grand. If you don't have the room, you're going to have to use an ordinary one. Now, what you could do, if you don't have one of these, and this, the ordinary type universal joints flopping about all over the place, we bit electrical tape around it, makes it a bit stiffer, but uh, I've seen these, these ones here with a wee spring on it, and as you can see, it holds itself. So there's nothing worse than trying to offer that up in, and the, uh, the socket just droops away down on you all the time, just, you know, so, so, uh, they just, they just make it a wee bit, uh, we got nicer today. Okay. So here we are, all back together again. Just getting up the temperature, just not in our idle. Just making sure everything's okay. We top up with a coolant there. And uh, just go around and we'll check. Getting up the temperature nicely there. Uh, Couple of lights in the dash there, but that's uh, what happens in these Volkswagens whenever you uh, whenever you take a battery out and reconnect it again. Uh, you get the ABS light up there, go reset. Once you drive it down the road a wee bit, so I'll go look under here. Just shut for leaks there and there. Bottom of the turbo. There. We get the torch out of the way. Let's see, Let's see that. So, all looks pretty good. And then there. Not a the pivot links there. No pivot links out of there, so yeah. Okay. We'll get the under tray back on. And to be ready for a test drive. So that's that for this one guys. Uh Maybe this helps somebody. Uh, it's a hell of a work to do with these uh, EGRs. We'll take it for a test drive, take it for a good run, uh, let it adapt itself, and then we'll scan the car again for fault codes. But that's it for now. That's it for this one. And uh, thanks for watching, uh, as ever. And uh, all the best. Bye bye.